Hi, this is Cindy with Flickertographer. I just wanted to show you how the October freebie Photoshop action that is called Instant Gmail Header Generator Decorator works. Um, this is what I posted on Facebook to show that before and then what I did with it um, after, how you can decorate it. So basically I'm going to go to my actions here. Uh, let's see, let's see. Okay, Gmail template decorator and hit play over to the right. See, it, it takes a couple of seconds. So what you have to do when you hit any of the templates that I create, you have to basically wait for it. Oops. <laughs> you have to wait for it to um, play itself out, okay? So some of them, depending on how many layers they have, can take uh, a couple of seconds longer. Just be patient and let it play itself out. So after it's played itself, this is what it looks like, okay? Now, you've got several layers. Um, this is the background, uh, you know, layer. You're not going to do anything with it. This is the one with the coloring. Okay, I'm going to just decorate something fairly quickly here for the sake of the tutorial. So I'm going to go ahead and go to my swatches panel and pick um, a purple, I'm sorry, an orange color. <laughs> now I uh, branded uh, this with that pattern, but I'm actually going to double click on the thumbnail for the pattern here and I'm going to my pattern selection and I'm going to pick um, this uh, pattern that I have and then I'm going to change the blend which by the way if you have patterns change the blends and play with it this is what I do a lot of people have their favorites um, but for this one with the black background I'm going to turn it into screen so that it'll actually show the color through the little dots the polka dots okay so that's pretty much what I'm going to do with that then I'm going to, now this is my recommendation since I created the action. If you're going to add any text or anything additional, I would encourage you to go to the very top of the group. You can see I grouped it. It just opened it open. So then add a new layer up on the, bo on the bottom here. You see, add a new layer. Whoops. Okay, let me go ahead and just rewind. Step back. Okay, I'm going to step back again because I made a boo-boo. I'm going to place my um, uh, mouse on the uh, top layer. I'm going to go ahead and create a new layer on the bottom here. See, um, create new layer. Click on it. Okay, I'm going to push it over because apparently I'm not doing it right. <laughs> and I'm going to add uh, some uh, Halloween decor. I have a brush that I wanted to use get the black color out and then minimize my brush just a little too big anyways I'm just gonna kinda eh, randomly select you know little cuteness spots here Okay, I'm sorry, I'm taking a little bit longer than I actually was looking to take. <laughs> All of a sudden, that's not what I meant to do. But okay, let's just go ahead and leave it at that for now. And then I'm going to add another layer, and I'm going to add text. And I'm doing this just for the sake of the tutorial, okay? Just to show you guys that you can actually add, you know, anything to it. So let's write something like, um, trick. No, no. Let's go back. Happy. <laughs> uh oh. Halloween. Again, I'm sorry for the delay. I have uh, too much on my desk here and very little room. Okay, so normally if I'm designing something, obviously I would kind of take my time and do it a little bit different. But just for the tutorial, I just want to kind of give you a quick show and tell and I don't want to take too long so okay I'm gonna accept my change by clicking here okay and then that's it so I'm done with my background and my decor which I added the decor at the very top just to not intervene with this so now I'm gonna go and um, find my images Oops. 
So photos are under photos. Uh, photo one is right here. It already has the clipping mask with the green highlighted for EC findings. Okay, we're going to go to file and at place because, and by the way, let me retract. You're going to select, in order for you to place your image in photo one um, clipping mask, uh, you want to select the clipping mask layer, which reads clipping mask. And I even wrote click here to place photo below. Okay, so click there and go to file, scroll down to place. I'm going to actually go to, okay, never mind that. <laughs> Where are my photos here? My goodness, I'm lost. Hello? Okay, I'm just going to grab this one. I have a bunch of images that I don't know what to do with. Okay, so I'm just going to pick this one. Okay, if you wanted to, you can size it. You know, if you want to size an image smaller or larger um, to size it properly, just, uh, well, first of all, it's already on transform, uh, free, uh, free transform, uh, which you would do command T for that. Hold down your shift key and your option key if you're on a Mac or shift and alt if you're on a PC and pull the corners with your mouse and then let go to move it. Whoops. Okay, so it's not perfect in my case just because I'm kind of trying to hurry up here. And then accept your change by either clicking on your mouse on the check mark or hitting return. Either one will work. And see, the clipping mask automatically placed the image in photo one uh, placement. So I don't have to worry about, you know, making it fit correctly or whatever. I set these up that you can easily do this. So now we're going to group folder two. I'm going to select my clipping mask two for my second image. And then I'm gonna to go to File and Place Image. Okay, what else can I pick? Okay, goodness gracious. Okay, I'm just gonna pick this one. <laughs> I'm just not making a really good coordination here, but for the tutorial, that's my defense, I'm just gonna make it happen here. And once again, if you wanna size it smaller or larger, just be sure to hold down Shift and Option or Shift and Alt if you're on a PC. At the same time, hold it down and then pull the corners. I'm gonna do it just to show. Uh, pull the corners to size it. Let go of the clicking of the mouse and then let go of your Shift and Option or Option and then accept your change, okay? And there it is, placed just right. So now we go to number three, click on the clipping mask, go to file, place. Aha, uh -huh. let's see what other image. Okay, let's pick that. Okay, now this is great, I'm glad this happened. You see how I placed um, my, um, my, I selected the third clipping mask and I went to file place and it landed over here when it came. Okay, if that happens, don't get um, scared. Just drag it over with your mouse. Don't hold any keys down. Just go ahead and drag it with your mouse to the third image. What happens is sometimes it'll land behind the other ones, but it's still attached to the clipping mask, which is why it shows right here just right. And if you notice, the image is larger. This is um, actually perfect because if you see that there's a difference and you can actually see the background, that already shows that the clipping mask is working. Because if it wasn't, let, let me go ahead and detach it just for the sake of the tutorial. I'm going to unclip it. Okay, I guess I can't, never mind, <laughs> because it's uh, activated. But if it wasn't, you would see the whole image across this section, so you wouldn't be able to see the background. But because the clipping mask is already in place, it's already clipping it, even though you haven't accepted the change. So I'm actually going to hold down Shift and Option, because I'm on a Mac. If you're on a PC, then it would be Alt and Shift. And I'm going to pull my corners and then I'm gonna let go with my mouse and then let go of my keys. And then that's going to allow me to enlarge my image without making it pixelated, without making it look distorted. This will actually proportion size my image properly. Um, that's number three. Let's go to number four, which is the last one. Now again, select your clipping mask four layer, go to file, place, okay? 
and then you'll find your images wherever they're kept. I just uh, happen to have a couple sitting right in a folder just for previews and things like that that I do. And okay, oh, let's pick this one. Okay. Now again, it landed behind the other ones. Just drag it with your mouse. See, the clipping mask is working because it's not showing through the the background um, layer over here. You can see the dots and the orange, but it's still clipped and you can still move it. So again, if you want to make it bigger, all you have to do is hold down Shift and Option on a Mac or Shift and Alt on a PC and then just size it. So I'm going to do that just a little bit and then let it go and I'm just going to move it down. I mean, this is not, you know, the ideal setup. For me, you want to make it a little more coordinated, but just for the tutorial. So I'm going to accept it, and that's it. My images were already sharpened, so I'm not going to resharpen it. To be honest with you, it would be best um, if you already have them sharpened. Um, if you are working on an image or several images and you still have them up in Photoshop, all I would recommend that you do is basically... Um, select all on that image copy and then make um, then bring then select your clipping mask layer and then instead of hitting file place what you're gonna do is you're gonna hit file and then paste um, image and it'll paste it right in the actual clipping mask spot for you and then when you flatten everything then you can go and um, and add your decor then go and sharpen it and then, you know, that's the other way you can go about it. So we're done, but these images were already sharpened, so we're not doing them. Uh, so now I'm just going to go to uh, Layer, Flattened, okay? And then I'm going to, um, I mean, you could, you know, like I said, um, do it for the web, sharpen it. I'm going to just go ahead and uh, save for the web. I don't want to, well, maybe I should. I'll just go ahead and sharpen it. Boy, I'm just so indecisive at this moment. <laughs> I'm just going to do a quickie one. Okay, so if I take it off, you can see it more like on the text and whatnot. Um, so then I'm going to flatten again. Now, normally I wouldn't do that because my images were already uh, sharpened, but just showing. So then I go to save for the web. If I'm going to use it as a header, then I definitely want to save for the web, okay? And because it still saves it as a JPEG. Um, and then you name it whatever you want. Uh, Gmail, header, Halloween. And then I save it to the desktop because I can find it much easier. And then save. And um, where is it? There it is. There it is. There is my uh, header for Halloween. That's it. You guys are all set. Anyways, thank you. Um, please check out my Photographer store. I'm creating a lot of new um, actions. In fact, I'm going to show you one that I'm in the process of creating. I'm creating um, wall hanging frames. Basically, it's an action. It creates the frames for you and the matting. All you have to do is place your image inside of it. Um, it comes with a clipping mask and it works just like these did. And uh, you can utilize these to basically um, show your clients how their images are going to look before they purchase them. Or if you just want to make it look pretty for your blog or something like that. But I'm creating new actions that will actually build wall hanging frames just like this and different um, type of framing. Hope you like these. Thanks so much.